20 minutes of useless information about Fallout 3. During the quest Rescue from Paradise, in Paradise Falls, Penny will ask the player to free and escort a slave named Rory McLaren, locked in an old Pulowski preservation shelter called The Box. While escorting him, he will sometimes say, Can't nobody eat 50 eggs. Referencing the main character from the movie Cool Hand Luke, who accepts a challenge to eat 50 eggs. I can eat 50 eggs. Nobody can eat 50 eggs. In the early development of Fallout 3, Bethesda originally used a different set of emblems for the Enclave and its vertebrate fleet that were drawn by the late concept artist Adam Adamovich. The prototype emblems can still be seen on some of the wreckages of vertebrates in game. There's a glitch that allows you to wear unlimited amount of hats. After completing the Operation Anchorage DLC, you will be rewarded with the Chinese stealth armor. When equipped, for some reason, the game allows you to wear multiple hats at the same time, giving you the benefits from all of them. You can also equip multiple copies of the same hat. When engaged in combat, Fox, the super mutant found in Vault 87, will sometimes say, Wake up! Time to die! A direct quote from the 1982 movie Blade Runner, where the replicant Leon Kowalski says to Rick Deckard, Wake up! Time to die! In Little Lamplight, the outfit worn by Mayor McCready is identical to the costume worn by Jedediah, the pilot's son in the 1985 movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. A pith helmet, goggles, and a jacket one size too big. Also, the settlement of Little Lamplight in general is most likely based off of the children's colony that Mad Max encounters in the movie, a society of children living by themselves. During combat, if a Robobrain loses track of you, they may say, Are you still there? Referencing the 2007 video game Portal, where the phrase is also used by the turrets in the game. Are you still there? Did you know that after Liberty Prime gets bombarded by the Enclave's orbital strike during the Death From Above quest in the Broken Steel DLC, his detached head can still be interacted with, with him still saying some of the anti-communist phrases, now slurred and garbled. A if you decided to kill Three Dog, the radio host of the Galaxy News radio station, Margaret, a technician working for Three Dog, will take his place on the air and will remain the voice of the GNR for the rest of the game. This is Margaret, and you're listening to, um, oh, the hell with it. Listen to some music and pray we find someone to replace Three Dog. If you go back to the GNR studio, there's no one there. So where's Margaret broadcasting from? Well, it turns out that her character was simply left cut from the game and can only be found in the game's data files. This is what she would have looked like. I'm watching you. Stop! Thief! The McClellan family townhome located in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. is inhabited by a single dormant Mr. Handy. When activating it, using the terminal, you will have an option to order him to read a bedtime poem to the now deceased child found in the other room, creating one of the most depressing scenes in the whole game. There will come soft rains and the smell of the ground and swallows circling with their shimmering sound and frogs in the pool singing at night, and wild plum trees in tremulous white. Robins will wear their feathery fire, whistling their whims on a low fence wire, and not one will know of the war, not one. We'll care at last when it is done, not one would mind, neither bird nor tree, if mankind perished utterly. This whole house is a reference to Ray Bradbury's short story, There Will Come Soft Rains, about a robotic house in Allendale, California, that still works after a nuclear war, not knowing that its owners have perished in the atomic blast. The only survivor, the family dog, who dies soon after in the story, can be found behind the townhouse in Fallout 3. The poem recited by the Mr. Handy is also titled, There Will Come Soft Rains, written by Sarah Teasdale. 
Brian Wilkes, the eight-year-old survivor found in the settlement of Grey Ditch while hiding in the preservation shelter, will say, Now I know what a TV dinner feels like. Quoting a line said by John McClane in the movie Die Hard while crawling through a vent. I know what a TV dinner feels like. It's also interesting to note that the boy has the same initials as Bruce Willis, the actor playing McLean. There's an early cut loading screen found in the game files with text that reads, In the year 2277, Washington DC has been reduced to a nuclear shattered wasteland where the noble forces of the Brotherhood of Steel wage constant war against an army of hideous super mutants. This is just speculation, but perhaps this was the original planned setting for the game. The player would have had to join the Brotherhood to defeat a new super mutant army similar to Fallout 1. When fighting a Mr. Gutsy, he will say, I'm starting to get angry. You would not like me when I'm angry. This line is a nod to the 1978 TV series The Incredible Hulk, where in the opening sequence, Bruce Banner says to Jack McGee, Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Fort Constantine is a large intercontinental ballistic missile launch facility in the northwest of the capital wasteland. While exploring the area, we can discover that the launch codes for the missiles there are 000 000 referencing the real-life United States nuclear launch codes that were also just a string of zeros. Created in 1961 during the Cold War and weren't changed to legitimate codes until 1977. In the mothership's Zeta DLC, you can find a bugged Anchorage Quartermaster shipment holotape in a military footlocker located in the waste disposal area next to General Chase's overcoat. In the vanilla game, when trying to play the holotape, it will display a couple of lines with no audio. But if we fix the bug, we can listen to the recording that should have played. To General Constantine Chase, Anchorage Command, encoded message 457980A, decryption applied. These crates contain only a portion of the items you requested on 091777. Due to the increase in demand, we were unable to fill the entire order. Please distribute this equipment based on greatest need, and we'll attempt to send the rest of your request as soon as possible. Enclosed, you'll also find our new improved LAS-009 General's Overcoat. Hope it will serve as an appropriate upgrade. General Victor Breckenridge, U.S. Army, Quartermaster, Command Forward Depot, Oregon. When asked what she does for the Brotherhood, Night Captain Dusk will reply that she's a sniper and say, I'm a sniper with the pride. Put any mutie bastard within one mile of me and my rifle and, well, pack it up, troops. Fight's over. Referencing the movie Saving Private Ryan, where in it, Private Jackson makes similar remarks. Used to put me and this here sniper rifle anywhere, up to and including one mile of Adolf Hitler with a clear line of sight, sir. Pack your bags, fellas, war's over. If you convince the mechanist to end his superhero career and leave the town of Canterbury Commons alone during the superhuman gambit quest, he will reward you and give you his unique suit. If you wear the suit while adventuring around the capital wasteland, you have a chance of encountering a child who will think that you're the mechanist and will ask for your autograph. The mechanist, you're the awesomest person ever, ever. Can I have your autograph? If you're feeling really scummy, you can ask the boy 10 caps for the autograph. Oh, alright. I was going to use this money to buy food, but you're worth it, Mechanist. Or if you're feeling generous, you can give him the suit. Would it ever? You're the best, Mechanist. I'll never forget this. You can also have this encounter while wearing the Antagonizer outfit. The Antagonizer! You're the awesomest person ever! Ever. Another interesting detail that some players might not know about is when confronting the antagonizer in her lair, if you visited Hubris Comics beforehand and read the letters to the editor entry on one of the terminals there, a special dialogue option will become available that will allow you to convince the antagonizer to end things peacefully and give up her suit. You, you really believe that? When I read that comic, it explained so much. Where I came from who I was destined to be, what I had to do. But it never said the antagonizer could ever have a chance to go back to being normal. It never said I had a chance. Please, I, I think I've made some terrible mistakes. If you really think I still have a chance, just let me go. I'll give you the suit, 
No one ever has to see the antagonizer again. Just please, let me have another chance. In Chevy Chase, there's a small square with a unique monument, a bronze earth with a rocket ship circling it. This is a nod to the original creators of Fallout, Interplay. A similar looking logo appears when launching Fallout 1 and 2. When having your companion Sharon switch from melee combat to ranged weapons, he will say, If that is what you wish, then it is what I shall do. I must say that I find happiness in a warm gun. Referencing a song called Happiness is a Warm Gun by the Beatles. If left alive, President John Henry Eden will broadcast a declaration of war on the Brotherhood of Steel during the final battle for Project Purity. We stand now at the precipice. A great nation once more threatens to crumble, to topple into the sea of lawlessness and despair that have ruled us all for over 200 years. In short, my dearest America, we are at war. Even as I speak these words, fearless enclave soldiers are fortifying their positions at the great water purifier, bracing for an inevitable assault. The Brotherhood of Steel, in their arrogance, has claimed Project Purity as their own. They would steal the enclave's work, steal America's water. Don't even Matter of time before the traitors march on the purifier and attempt to take it by force. Let them come! During the quest The Amazing Aqua Cura in the Broken Steel DLC, you will be tasked with uncovering Griffin's scam operation in the Museum Authority building, where a single working terminal can be found with six pre-war log entries, with one entry titled MA0085, mentioning a doctor named Jillian Taylor, who is requesting a new tank for her whales. It reads, We've logged a fourth request from Dr. Jillian Taylor over at National Aquarium regarding a new new tank she wishes to be constructed for her whale exhibition. I have already spoken to director Barnicky and he maintains that a new exhibition is out of the question and the current one is becoming far too expensive to maintain. Director Barnicky has already spoken to the San Francisco Aquarium and they have agreed to begin construction of an appropriately sized tank and viewing area for Dr. Taylor's whales. He has also negotiated with that facility to have Dr. Taylor transferred and I support this decision. This whole entry is a direct reference to the plot of the 1986 science fiction movie Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, where not only does the movie have a character named Dr. Jillian Taylor, but the plot is all about the difficulty in constructing a very large whale tank to bring whales from the past to the future. It also took place in San Francisco. If the player visits Fort Independence and asks Defender Morgan, what have you got against the Brotherhood, she will refer to Elder Lyons as Ahab Lyons, who is off chasing his super mutant white whale. Sure, I bet you don't mind them being cuddly with the locals, but when we came out here we had a mission to do, damn it. But now they're wasting their time protecting yahoos like you, while Ahab Lyons is off chasing his super mutant white whale. This is a reference to Herman Malvel's novel, Moby Dick. If the player passes an intelligence check, they can continue the reference by inquiring as to whether Morgan believes that Lyons will be killed by the super mutants, to which Morgan expresses surprise that they have knowledge of the story. Huh? And here I thought we had the only remaining copy of that. Anyway, I don't know if the old man's going to die from them, but he sure as hell looks like he's going to drag his soldiers down with him. But he's not wasting any of our time anymore. Shellbridge is an interesting location found north of Broadcast Tower K28, where two rival ant colonies are battling each other in order to claim the area. If the player explores the Shellbridge tunnels, they will discover friendly mutated forager ants fighting a lot bigger invader ants. Here the player can assist the friendly forager ants and start an unmarked quest to stimulate the growth of the colony and kill the rival invader ant queen. After you kill her, as a reward you will be able to harvest ant nectar for the rest of the game and have your own little ant farm. Also, if you noclip underneath the egg pile, an extremely large Radiation King radio will be found underneath, seemingly placed there for technical reasons. While patching up the Lone Wanderer during the Wasteland Survival Guide personal injury quest, Maura Brown asked them to describe the pain with the line, Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? 
Any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. This echoes a line used by Count Rugen in the 1987 movie The Princess Bride when asking Wesley to describe the torture in the pit of despair. What did this do to you? Tell me. And remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. In the beginning of the game, inside the cafeteria of Vault 101, if you look at the notice board next to the jukebox, you will see a poster for Bingo Night, where we can see the number 13, and the winning prize is a week's supply of water rations. A subtle reference to the main quest of Fallout 1, where you were a member of Vault 13 and had to go out into the wasteland in order to find a water chip to save Vault 13's water supply. The unique looking Protectron robots found throughout the Capital Wasteland are designed after a fictional character from the 1950s called Robbie the Robot. Another glitch exists in the game that allows you to receive unlimited amount of experience points and caps. To do this, you will need an even number of scrap metal in your inventory. In my case, I have 8. Then, make your way to Fort Independence and offer to help the outcasts gather technology. This will allow you to trade the scrap metal you have to Protector Kasdan in return for some ammo, stim packs, grenades, or right away. After turning in the 8 scrap metal that you have, you will need to pitpocket him and get the scrap metal back without getting caught. Once that's done, talk to him again and turn in the metal again, except for two pieces. You need to leave these two pieces in your inventory in order for the glitch to work. Then you need to pitpocket Kazdan again and allow him to catch you. See? This will make him remove all the 8 pieces of scrap metal from your inventory instead of the 6 that you gave him. Now when talking to him you will be able to turn in unlimited amount of scrap metal because the game is now bugged and thinks you have endless amounts of scrap metal on you. Now to get an infinite number of experience points and caps, we need to travel to Megaton and trade the metal to Walter, the elderly handyman who is in charge of maintaining Megaton's water purifier and who will award us with caps and XP for the scrap metal we give to him. You can do this until you've reached a level that you're satisfied with. There are four unused pre-war holotapes titled Reconstructed Audio Logs that would have been found somewhere in the Operation Anchorage DLC. In it, unknown characters are talking about the virtual reality simulation of Operation Anchorage. Yeah, we can talk about how many times he made me rework the way his code looks in a sense. The idea of the Chinese developing something similar is not of the question. Cut out sex? Come on, man. Even you have to admit these are sheer fantasy. Look, this is the job. Most of these scenarios will never happen, but if they do, we'll have a plan. I swear, if Jinx comes to us with another ridiculous contingency scenario,